Ethiopia, one of the oldest countries in the world. The emergence of Ethiopian civilization dates back thousands of years. Egypt, known for its pyramids and fast history. The country that first comes to mind for most people, when talking about the Nile River. Did you know that Egypt is not the only country the longest river in the world runs through? Would you be surprised if I tell you that the Nile runs through or along the border of 11 African countries, including Ethiopia? Who owns the Nile? Let's see if we can find out. Ethiopia, the nation of 115 million people has been one of the world's fastest growing economies in the past 15 years. Boosted by heavy infrastructure investment. But the infamous pandemic and a conflict in the Tigray region slowed expansion in the past two years. In the year 2022, the GDP growth was 6.4% and for this year they are expected to grow at least by 7.5%. Ethiopia is booming, yet electricity reaches less than half of the population. Great progress has been made over the past two decades. The National Electrification Program outlines a plan to reach universal access by 2025. Part of this plan is the construction of the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam. No beehive we are not talking about the greatest album of the decade you won't break my soul. We talking about the extraordinary hydropower project located on the Blue Nile. The dam is the biggest hydropower dam in Africa and the seventh largest in the world. For Ethiopia, the project is meant to offer a solution to its severe power problem, providing electricity access for an estimated 65 million Ethiopians. While its neighbors will benefit from cheap energy exports, which one would expect is a win for the whole northeastern Africa region. Let's go back to 2011, that year Ethiopia began construction on the Renaissance Dam. Egypt and Sudan opposed the construction of the dam from the start. Filling the large reservoir of the dam will decrease the flow of the Nile water. Tensions have been particularly acute between Egypt, a downstream country, and Ethiopia, an upstream country, because more than 80% of the water reaching Egypt comes from the Blue Nile in Ethiopia. Egypt and Sudan demand that their historically acquired rights to be the baseline for all negotiations about the dam. But Ethiopia considers that unreasonable. To understand this stance, we have to go back to colonial times. Britain occupied Egypt in 1882 and maintained a strong influence until 1956. Its textile industries depended on Egyptian cotton, which relied on irrigation using the River Nile's water. British hydrologists developed a plan to regulate the flow of the Nile by building dams and reservoirs in upstream countries. But the plan had one major flaw. It didn't consult nor consider the interests of the nine upstream countries, including Ethiopia, Tanzania, and Kenya. Its aim was to safeguard Britain's interests. Egypt completed the construction of the Aswan High Dam in 1971. The dam continued to operate in favor of Egypt, providing water for irrigation and generating a huge amount of electricity. The goal was to end Egypt's dependency on upstream countries by storing the Nile waters in Egypt and it would end flooding. Aswan High Dam and the 1959 Nile Waters Treaty between Egypt and Sudan, ignored the interest of upstream countries, this frustrated Ethiopia. The dam, with an estimated annual water loss due to evaporation and seepage is between 10 to 15 BCM per year, would also prevent Ethiopia's future use of the Nile. The Aswan High Dam in Egypt, was the grandest project on the Nile and used to be the biggest hydropower dam in Africa, but has been surpassed by the Renaissance Dam as this project went ahead and was finished in February 2022. Ethiopia has been filling the Renaissance Dam without an agreement with Egypt, they finished the third filling in August 2022. Addis Ababa is almost finished to successfully operate the Renaissance Dam on full capacity. In the meantime, Egypt, according to the country's irrigation and water minister Hani Swilam, already has an annual water shortfall of up to 35 billion cubic meters, leaving it with no choice but to import more food. Egypt fears the dam will reduce the Nile waters within their borders, losing millions of jobs and diminishing the food supply of its 104 million citizens. However, Mr. Swilam said Egypt was not affected by Ethiopia's third dam filling last summer. I quote, that's because God gifted us a historic flood. End quote. Egypt was also not affected by the first and second Renaissance dam fillings in the summers of 2020 and 2021. Yet, Egypt still demands that Ethiopia enters a legally binding deal on the operation of the dam and agree a mechanism for dealing with future droughts. Egypt blames Ethiopia for the stalemate, but many scholars cite colonial-era treaties as the reason for the failed negotiations between Ethiopia, Egypt, and Sudan. To add fuel to the fire, Sudan changed its position expressing its full support for the Renaissance Dam. It's a dramatic shift from when Sudan sided with Egypt to oppose the dam's construction. The announcement was made when Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed went to Sudan, where he was welcomed by Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, chairman of the Transitional Sovereignty Council of the Republic of the Sudan. 
Al Buran and Abi discussed measures to deepen and improve bilateral ties at a meeting in Khartoum, Sudan. Buran emphasized that Sudan and Ethiopia are aligned and in agreement on all issues regarding the Renaissance Dam. Sudan wants Ethiopia to provide real-time data on the operation of the dam to ensure that its own power generating dams on the Blue Nile are not affected by an unexpected rise or fall in the volume of water. Abi, on the other hand said Ethiopia continues to stand in solidarity with Sudan in their current self-led political process, he stressed. The Prime Minister urged Sudanese political forces to solve problems without external interference. Regarding the Renaissance Dam Prime Minister Abi said it will not harm Sudan but will in fact be beneficiary to it in the field of electricity. This sounds like a perfect example of if you scratch my back, I scratch yours. The Renaissance Dam's reservoir will be large enough to store the full annual Blue Nile flow. But should anyone be allowed to exert such control over the Nile? Ethiopia has shown that they have filled the dam while taking the interests of the downstream countries Egypt and Sudan into account. All parties should go for a win-win situation regarding the Renaissance Dam. If Ethiopia, Egypt, Sudan and the other Nile countries would embark on a sustainable energy transition. With large-scale solar and wind farms and establish a unified power grid connectivity, across the 11 countries. Adding that it will mean sharing of countries' resources, investments, keeping the goals of energy security and affordability in mind. This could lead to operating the Renaissance Dam in synergy with solar and wind power. Who owns the Nile? That's not for me to answer. So, what do you think? Will Ethiopia and Egypt be able to make amends? Comment down below and tell us your point of view. Want to learn more about the history of Ethiopia, Egypt, the Renaissance Dam, Aswan High Dam and its consequences for the region? In the description you can find some recommended books. I hope you enjoyed this video. I did, making it. Thank you. And see you next week where we will go in depth about the success of Rwanda and Botswana.